Hello all, welcome to part 9 of the buffer overflow primer video series. In this video, we will look at a demonstration of the return to libc exploit. So let's bring up our terminal. Before we actually begin with the programming aspects, uh, what we need to understand is that probably there are already various stack protections applied to the kernel which we might be using. Let's quickly look at the kernel version. And if you notice, it is a 2.6 kernel. So if you remember in the slides, uh, there were various protections which we spoke about. We had NX non-executable memory and ASLR, etc. So on this kernel, non-executable memory patch is applied and so is ASLR. For this video, let's go ahead and disable the ASLR protection. We will cover how to combat ASLR in a separate video. So just to confirm that ASLR is indeed enabled, let's look at the process memory map. So we are looking at our own process memory map. And if you notice in this invocation, uh, the stack basically starts at BF81C000. Now if we once again invoke the program, you will notice that the stack location has changed to BFB7C000, right? And this is what reflects the fact that the various segments have been relocated. And what this means is that address space layout randomization is currently enabled in the kernel. Now there's a very simple way to disable it and that is uh, using the proxys kernel randomize VA space. So we just echo zero into it, write zero into this variable. And now when we actually look at our map, if you notice BFFEB000 is where the stack is located. We invoke the program again. And if you notice the stack location has not changed. In a separate video, we will look at how to combat ASLR. In this video, we will just look at how to go about combating the non-executable uh, stack problem. So let's bring up our victim exploitme.c. This is exactly the program uh, which was there in the previous video. I've just added a get char statement and I'll tell you why a little later in the video. That is the only modification which has been made. Let me compile this program. Now let's go ahead and open up our other program, which is actually going to be the hacker program. So this is the program read to libc.c. Uh, and what we've done is if we go back to our slides, basically, we have gone ahead and created an environment variable once again, which will go ahead and create all of these uh, program structure. So before we do that, if you remember, we talked about finding out the address where system exit, etc. are located. So the way to do that is basically let's quit the program. Let's load up exploit me in GDB. And let's go ahead and break in main, run the program with a demo input simply hi. So the way to figure out where the system libc call is located is simply to go ahead and print that on the screen. So this is where the system call is located. Let's actually open up thread to libc.c 
and if you notice uh, this address uh, in reverse order 60 BE AE and B7 uh, is what we have written here right 60 E5 EA B7 60 E5 EA B7 similarly the exit call is located at this address right and we've copied that here however currently we do not know where the string slash bin slash bash is if we go back to our slides this was the third thing which we require now what we are going to do is go ahead and inject this string as an environment variable we'll look at how we'll do that a bit later uh, so now just following the program flow we had 80 bytes of the buffer variable, 4 bytes of the frame pointer, 4 bytes of the return address, 4 bytes of, uh, you know, what is going to be stored as PTR2 and then the final 4 bytes of PTR3. So this in totality comes to 96 bytes. Along with that, we are going to have a 4 byte padding for the null and a 4 byte pre padding to name the environment variable. So all this together comes to 96 plus 804 bytes. Now let's go ahead and actually fill up this entire buffer with nops, even though it doesn't really matter, uh, but still. And then in the beginning of the buffer, we name the environment variable, which is buff. From there on, uh, we stored buff here. Then we straight away go to 84 plus 4, 88, 80 plus, 80 plus 4, 84, and 4 bytes for buff is equal to which comes to 88 bytes and this is the place where we go ahead and store the address to the system libc call right this is where we store it then at 92 we go ahead and store the exit libc call address and then finally at 96 we go ahead and store the address to the bash bin slash bash string and then finally, we just have a four byte null padding. Then we put this variable into the environment and then call bin slash bash. Right now, we have not filled up the address to bash. We'll do that a bit later. So let's compile this program as well. Now what we shall do is in order to find where bash needs to be located, the first thing we will do is run the return to libc program. As expected, we get a bash shell with the environment variable buff set to an appropriate value. Now we go ahead and inject the bin slash bash variables. So let's actually inject bin slash the k shell or the con shell. Uh, right. Now we need to know in some approximate way where this would be located in the program memory. So for that, what we have done is written a very simple program called get environment variable address dot c. What this simply does is it goes ahead and uses get environment variable. Uh, you pass the name and it actually tells you the address, right? This would be a good starting point. There would be some minor differences uh, in every program's memory location where the bin slash KSH would be mapped and we would look at that a bit later. So let's compile this program. And now uh, go ahead and give it the input, which is my shell so that we get some approximate address. So this is the approximate address where the bin slash KSH uh, string is present, right? Now the next thing which we are going to do is go ahead and run the victim program, which is exploit me and give it the input, which would be buffer right 
So if you remember, we have a get char and that is where the program execution is currently waiting. Now, in order to look at the memory space of this program, let us attach GDB to this instance of exploit me. Let's go to the other terminal. First, let's figure out the process ID of exploit me, which is running in the other terminal. So if you notice 3150 is the process ID of exploit me. You can see this whole string of garbage here. That is the dollar buff which was passed to it. So now let's fire up GDB and let's quickly go ahead and attach to process 3150. Now what we shall do is go ahead and figure out where exactly the bin slash ksh uh, variable has been stored. So we have an approximate address value. Let's examine that. So if you notice bin slash ksh is not located here. Let's actually press a couple of enters. And what we will notice is bin slash ksh is actually here. So let's find out the exact address. We know it's uh, 48. This would actually mean 50. So this is the address where bin slash ksh is mapped in the exploit me dot c program when it is in memory. So now let us go back. Uh, Continue the program execution. Exit from both these shells and go back to our uh, return to libc.c program and go ahead and enter this address for bash. So this is the bin slash ksh location. So it is 50 fd. And then we have FF and BF. Let's recompile the program. And now let's go ahead and run it again. So the program is running. We are inside the bash shell. Now let's go ahead and once again set up the my shell environment variable consisting of bin slash ksh. Right. So now basically the buff variable is there and the my shell variable both have been set into the environment. Now let's run exploit me with the buff as input. So basically now the return address etc has been set properly. The bash String location has also been set. So now when we execute this, this is the get chart. Here we are. So we are into bin slash ksh. It has been executed and we now have a shell. Let's exit this. So well, that was it for this video. Basically what we've done is we've subverted the uh, NX protection, which stops from executing instructions from the stack. So we use the return to libc exploit strategy in which we went ahead and actually had code executed from the libc library, which is memory mapped into the process. And that is how we were able to get our shell. Hope you enjoyed this video. I would encourage you to actually download the code and try out these examples on your own computer. I would also love to hear all your feedback. Please leave your comments behind. Uh, well, that's all for this video. Thank you.